challenge for our students is having to do with experience because when they go out looking at job listings, in a lot of cases, if they're not talking to companies that are coming specifically to campus to recruit, you know, it's always, you need experience. So trying to help them find opportunities for internships and other things to get experiences and then showcasing that. And I think the uh, um, portfolio project that we've been doing, I know has helped a lot of my students that are in junior and senior level courses that I've worked with them on to, to how to showcase the experience they do have. Because a lot of times they don't realize that class projects and things like that are also experienced and they can showcase those as well. So I think that's, that's one. Um, I think the other is teaching them how to keep up with technology. So just like when the built suggests new things, how do they stay in touch? And I think we addressed some of those in another question, but uh, you know, helping them find those resources and make those connections so that they can uh, stay fresh in whatever their sort of interest is in terms of the broad spectrum of IT topics. A few things this semester in particular, this past year, in fact, one is they're changing schedules. A lot of my students have existing jobs. And during this pandemic, their schedules would change quite frequently. Remember, oftentimes when someone else had to call in due to exposure to COVID, people had to step up at their existing place of employment. So my students would have to contact me quickly and say, hey, I'm sorry, but my boss needs me to come in and fill in. Now, that was a challenge. But the other benefit here during this virtual world that we're in right now is that my students could watch the recordings. They could reach out to me after watching, and then we could touch base on email as they had other questions. And then I offered office hours that were more flexible than normal to try and help. So that way, when their schedules changed, mine could too. And one other quick thing uh, I would just point out, budgets are tight. And a lot of my students trying to get a device that might be the best computer to work on a virtual machine, that type of thing, that's very difficult. So we, through LCC, we offered uh, virtual capabilities that were largely only requiring a browser, that type of capability. And as long as they have a browser, we could offer a lot of the resources they needed. Students take for granted what they're learning. Um, they think that everyone gets the same thing. Everyone knows it because they do. Uh, they, um, to combat this, they need to have contact with business leaders, hiring managers, and other professionals in the field. Uh, so you have to bring other people into your classroom to really shine the light on the value of what they're learning. Um, then uh, students also think they have to learn everything and then they are done. In IT, they need to be learning professionals uh, more than anything else. Uh, to do this, they have to be uh, ready to learn at any one point. They have to be open to it. And, and they also have to understand how they individually learn best. So we have academic challenges and then we, what we call uh, outside the academic challenges, which all of the students are coming with, where we as the instructor has to solve and somehow or the other as the institution has to solve. To give you examples, you know, the, the computer may not be as savvy as, as what we have, right? Because yeah, you're taking programming classes or whatever, and you have decided to get a computer science major, but the laptop may not be as savvy or may that be slow. We have still a lot of issues, even in, in our part of the world, even though we say used in a bigger city or Dallas might be a bigger city, but, but people come from surrounding 30, 40 mile radius. And we have internet issues here, just right here in just what we call 105 and 59 area. That's, a, that's still the internet is so spotty. So it's not a high speed internet. They can't get internet access. And obviously that's, those are the things which we can control. Uh, then we had transportation issues for students. If you have a face-to-face -face classes, uh, we are facing a lot of the students having a transportation issues that the childcare issues and all this stuff. And what we've done at the institution obviously is they can, uh, we have this uh, rent a laptop program 
check out the laptop program. Then we have the child care on campus now. Um, and, and so we, have done, we are addressing these issues. We are working with the county, outside the county and things like that, where the students uh, can come. At, at, they can meet at one location. Some students can meet all together and then maybe county bus can pick them up or transportation. So we're working with all those kinds of issues out there. And, it's, and if, there are, if there is an academic issue, then we obviously we have a lot of academic support. We have tutoring. Okay, we have counseling, so we got a lot of these personal uh, counseling uh, who are licensed professionals who help them out to uh, issues they personally have. And on the academic side, what I try to do is um, every week I send them then an update. I said, okay, these are things we covered and, and this is the update, these are exams are coming on, whatever. Uh, do you have any questions or things like that? So if if it if it if face to face class is very easy, I can meet them in my office hours and explain them what's going on or whatever subject matter they have problem with, the concepts. But now with the whole last year, we all know that we all online and it was very very difficult to get there. So what I started and was very successful was what I call on demand. Okay, anybody can on demand me and say, hey, I want to have a Zoom at. 8 p.m. tonight. I said, okay, okay. There's, well, obviously, there's some something, uh, and I and I tell them if I'm online, and if you send me, if I say ping me, 